In the spring of 1994, I came across the statistic that web usage was growing at 2300% a year. And outside of a petri dish, I hadn't seen anything grow that fast. I made a list of 20 different products that you might be able to sell online and picked books as the first best product primarily because there are so many books. There's no way to have a two and a half million title physical bookstore. The largest physical bookstores in the world only have about 175,000 titles. And there's no way to have a print catalog. If you were to print the Amazon.com catalog, it would be the size of more than 40 New York City phone books. The basic technology is fairly simple. The problem was ubiquity of that technology. And this looked like, because of that growth rate, the first time ever that the basic technology needed to do electronic commerce in an acceptable way would be ubiquitous. So it actually turns out that the ubiquity of the internet is more important than the technology of the internet. The internet is creating the biggest Californian job boom since the gold rush. And America is running out of homegrown engineers. But the language of the internet is English. So wherever you come from, if you're a decent programmer and speak English, apply here. The sound of leather on willow. It's a cricket game. We're not in England. We're in Santa Clara County, the most heavily wired and networked community in the world. The Valley employs thousands of Indian-born engineers who bring with them not only their programming skills and their engineering degrees, but also their cricket balls and bats. Sunshine and a field to play is all we ask for. And since there's this big boom um, in America, in, in Silicon Valley here, um, which require a whole bunch of engineers to come all the way from India, you know, we make the big you know, uh, trip up to America to work, and then we come here and find out that there's cricket being played. India is the second largest uh, country with the number of engineers after the United States uh, in the whole world. So I think that is a factor. And the second thing is because uh, it's an English-based system, it's a lot easier for people to come from India and integrate and uh, do business in the United States. With the arrival of the internet, companies here can now fill their job vacancies with skilled Indian engineers who don't have to leave India. Could be bad news for the local cricket scene. I work in an industry where there's zero unemployment. You can't get skilled labor at any price. So we're scouring the world, world market to get programmers. The quality of the people is astonishing. The loyalty of the people and the work ethic, the quality of their English. I mean, everything just blew us away. We just had a fabulous, have a fabulous experience uh, uh, in, in Bangalore, and we're expanding our operations there very, very rapidly. For all the outward differences, India's Silicon Valley has a lot in common with my Silicon Valley, starting with traffic jams and construction everywhere. The street signs and billboards are all in English. Bangalore is busy and booming because of the huge numbers of programmers Western companies are putting to work. The internet has become a worldwide digital communication network that rivals in size the telephone system. So here we are, 12,000 miles, 12 time zones away from where I live in Silicon Valley in California, in Bangalore, the Silicon Valley of India. Programmers here solve the problems of users around the world. Companies founded here serve customers in Europe and the United States. And it all happens because of the internet. So, so what we have done is to set up a uh, um, company here, the kind of investment which you, which you see here, which you have made, oh, yeah. with a clear approach to do work in India, leverage those skills, develop those technology skills in India, so that we leverage that for Novell. Novell, the netwear company from Utah, is constructing a new Indian headquarters building here. 21st century technology built by pre-industrial labor. We work with uh, GE, General Electric, almost all the units of GE, uh -huh. uh, Allied Signals, uh, Sequent, uh -huh. Xerox, Putnam Investor Services in Boston, uh -huh. uh, 
Tandem, Cisco, Stratacom. Sundar Sankaran is a typical young programmer in Bangalore. Sundar offered to take me to work with him on the back of his motor scooter. Apparently, every one of his fellow programmers had exactly the same idea. They say that in Bangalore, every second person writes code, and everybody honks at the traffic lights. Honking is a major pastime out here. So you tend to get bored, you generally honk for some time. <laughs> Makes you feel nice. <laughs> in India, we have uh, computers as part of the curriculum. Now it starts in class 3, grade 3 as you would call it. So, I've been doing some kind of programming or other since uh, class 8. When I was there, it was class 8. Uh -huh. So, once I finished my bachelor's, I got into a non-formal institute for computer learning. And then started pro programming. Programmers in Bangalore are awake when America is asleep. The internet has perfected the 24-hour workday. <laughs> You're working when your customer is sleeping. Uh -huh. Okay, to that extent, if he gives you a problem during his working hours, you solve it and send it back to him by the time he starts working. So, I mean, it's, it's a great advantage, especially if you're doing things offshore. We get a call in the evening through email saying there's a problem. Next day morning when people come to the US, problem is solved. Ah. While the customer gets surprised saying, well, I just told you at 5 o'clock in the evening, how come in the morning you guys solved it? Now the problem <laughs> is solved in a other part of the world by really using this 24-hour development cycle. It's not only cricket the British Empire gave India, it also made English the language of government and higher education, which gives Indian engineers another great advantage. People here know English, unlike Japan or China and places like that. People know English, you know, so that is a lingua franca of, you know, software. You have to know English. My kids uh, study in an English medium school. They cannot uh, read or write my own, own mother tongue, which I'm able to do it, but the next generation is not able to do that. Same way you'll find that Indians don't have pr problems speaking of languages. They can speak French, they can speak, you know, Belgian probably, you know. Most of the languages, people going from here, they pick up very easily. For an American, especially an American from Silicon Valley, it's almost impossible to imagine India as a high technology development center. I mean, just look around. This, this is amazing. The average person in an Indian school learns at least three languages, English, Hindi, and their local language. Some of them know five or six. Compare that to American students. Think about it in terms of computer languages. What are they? They have uh, syntax, they have characters, they have objects, they have verbs. What's the difference between C++ and Hindi? Not all that much, really. They have a 5,000-year tradition of mathematics, which we don't. After the World Wide Web and the browser, there's a third breakout invention that's driving the expansion of the web lifestyle. It's called Java, a network programming language named after the valley's favorite fuel. Like the others, it's helped make the internet easier to use for anyone, anywhere, and with any kind of computer. Because the internet grew in such a haphazard way, the computers on it use many different programming languages. This wasn't a problem when the networks were separate, but when the World Wide Web made it possible for them to communicate, there had to be a way to make it easy. A guy named James Gosling came up with the answer. He invented a language that would run the same on any computer, one size fit it all, which was good for business. And like everything else on the internet, it had a strange name, Java. Maybe he drank too much coffee while working on his invention. Better than naming it Budweiser. Everyone knows that if you go to the computer store, you have to buy software that runs on Windows or a different piece of software that runs on the Mac. With Java, you can take a single program and it will run on both, and it will run on both well. That opportunity was created because of the, the Internet. Because the Internet is a mixed network, and it doesn't make sense to have 20 versions of your software on a single server. So the promise of the Internet coincided just at the right time with the great inventions by people like James Gosling in the language.